Hello everybody, I'm Richard Oldner and welcome to the channel. Please, before we get going, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, go to all those notifications so that you get, that's right, notified when I do all of these videos. Today we're going to talk about 5 liter Mustang performance, no, not the Coyote, the good one, the original OG one, <laughs> shot across the bow at all the Coyote owners. Actually, I'm a big fan of Coyotes, they work very well, in fact, they make like 100 or 200 more horsepower than the original one we're talking about today, but today's discussion is all about the original 5 liter Ford, the one back in the Fox Mustangs, you know what I'm talking about, and I want to show you how to make more power from that 5 liter, and naturally, the recipe for that is head, cam, intake, and <laughs> boost. That's right. It's so simple. But Richard, what about splitting the block? Honestly, I don't think we have to worry about that. To illustrate that the 5-liter Ford obviously will take a lot more power than what we think, and we're dealing specifically with the block strength here, kind of. Uh, we're taking a look at stock bottom end stuff with ring gap, and we can start off with this combination, which ended up being a Torque Storm supercharged combination. It easily exceeded 600 horsepower, but it started off as an Explorer motor, which is very common and popular because it has GT40 or GT40P heads, and it has the GT40 or aluminum uh, cast Cobra intake manifold, both of which are desirable as an upgrade for a typical 5 liter stuff. We upgraded other things on this. We basically ended up using the short block on this and upgraded the short block with different heads, cam, and intake to produce even more power because the factory stuff, even the better GT40 stuff, which is better than 5 liter stuff, isn't really enough. So what we did was we took the stock short block. It probably had 150 or 200,000 miles when we got it from the wrecking yard, and we upgraded it with a whole slew of trick flow top end parts. So let's take a look at our test description here. We installed on, on our Explorer short block, we installed a, a trick flow camshaft, which was a 540 560 lift. 224, 232 degree duration split at 112 degree lobe separation angle. We also replaced the GT40 heads with a set of TFS 11R CNC ported heads. They, these were 170s. Those heads work very well. They've got a small chamber. They flow a lot. They've got small ports. I like the way that they look externally. They look like a billet head. They're kind of awesome looking. So externally, they got, they got good eyeball as well as working very well. The heads and cam were topped with a TFS uh, Street Heat Long Runner Intake Manifold to replace the Cobra version, or to replace the Explorer version. We had an ActiFab throttle body. We had inch and three-quarter headers. And obviously, we had an optimized tune with a Holly HP management system. And all of that worked out fairly well. With that combination, with our heads, cam, and intake Explorer short block, we produced 407 horsepower and 397 foot-pounds of torque. And to give you an idea... Here is what this upgrade looks like compared to a stock 5 liter. We've run many of those. I'll go ahead and move myself here so that we can kind of get an idea. But a stock 5 liter run under the same conditions makes the, ours, the last one we ran made 261 horsepower and 321 foot-pounds of torque. The reason that it makes more than the 225 horsepower that it's rated at, because this was a factory HO intake, the stock E7TE heads, everything was stock on it, the stock short block, all that stuff. The reason that it makes more is because we ran it with no accessories. We ran it with an open throttle body. We ran this particular one with long tube headers and not the stock exhaust manifolds and no cats or no exhaust or any of that stuff. So that's the reason it makes more on the engine dyno than it does the way that it's rated by the factory. Because when they rate it by the factory, they run it on an engine dyno. It's not wheel horsepower. It's actually flywheel horsepower. But they run it with all of the factory stuff intact. All the air intake, all the accessories. They run it with a factory tune, which obviously ours had a better tune on it, and all the factory exhaust. So we, it makes more power the way that we run it. But here's what happened. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of our stock stuff there. Here Here's what happened when we ran it with a Torque Storm centrifugal supercharger. With the Torque Storm on it, we installed a, we ran 20 to 21 degrees of timing. We ran good gas in it. We had an 8 inch crank pulley and a 3.25 inch blower pulley. We were obviously had an optimized tune on it because we had the Holly HP and it produced 637 horsepower, 637.5 and 544. And this was at a peak boost of 
10 pounds. The peak boost was at 10 pounds out here at 6,400 RPM. As with all centrifugal blowers, it had a rising boost curve, so it was much lower down low, down around two and a half to three pounds at the beginning and a peak of 10 at the top. So not only did this thing make this run, it made many, many runs like this. In fact, we'd run the supercharger on this, this very high mileage already Cobra short block or, or Explorer short block, but we ran 35 to 40 pulls under boost. So this thing did this time and time again and would therefore last not just once, but we think quite a while kind of at this power level, even with that factory five liter block. Let's get to our next combination. Another example where we took a production late model 5 liter hydraulic roller block into the what I would call spl block splitting territory is when we built a 347 and then subjected it to bump modifications, heads came an intake manifold, and then boost from a vortex centrifugal supercharger. But here's what happened when we ran this thing initially. And what I did was I did the same thing to a 302 and then we also did it to a 347. So what I did on the 347 was we ran 347 with a stock uh, production camshaft, an, an HO camshaft, and then also stock production uh, E7TE cylinder heads. This was topped off on our 347 with a GT40 upper lower intake and a 65 millimeter throttle body, also long tube headers. So it basically had a stock style intake manifold. The GT40 is a little bit better, but stock heads and camshaft from a five liter HO, but was a 347 and run in this configuration. Our 347 produced 306 horsepower and peak torque was up over 390 foot pounds. We didn't even load it down below probably where torque the peak torque was, but that was really wasn't the important thing. What we were trying to do was then add heads, cam, and intake to get this thing to make even more power, and that's exactly what we did. And here's what happened after we replaced the factory heads, the factory camshaft, and a GT40 intake. You can see, I'll go ahead and slide down here so you can see a little bit better. We picked up a ton of power, actually. We were all the way up to 449 horsepower. Peak torque checked in here at 420 foot-pounds of torque. We lost a little bit below 4,000 RPM, you can see, owing to the fairly good-sized camshaft. So what we did was replace the stock heads with a set of RHS CNC-ported heads. We replaced a factory HO camshaft with a fairly good-sized cam. It was an XFI 236 cam. And I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. It was 579 lift, a 236 248 degree duration split and 114 degree lobe separation angle. We also replaced the GT40 upper and lower intake manifold and 65 millimeter throttle body with an Edelbrock RPM2 induction system with a bigger throttle body. We ran the same long tube headers on it. And when we did that, this was the result. We got a lot more power, a lot more peak power and a lot more peak torque and push power production, obviously given that camshaft, we push power production higher out in the RPM range, but this would actually be beneficial once we added our supercharger. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we added boost and started pushing. Remember, this was all done with a production late model five liter hydraulic roller block, although it did have the 347 stroker crankshaft and four draws and forged pistons in it, but those weren't worth the things that guys were worried about breaking. They're worried about breaking, <laughs> splitting the block, basically up from the main webbing up to the cam journal. So here's what happened when we added our supercharger. You can see we've picked up a log. Go ahead and move this up over here out of the way. You can see, and you can see that the power curve in traditional kind of typical centrifugal supercharger fashion, the power curve is still rising. We just shut this thing off before even 6,500 RPM, but we are up at 665 horsepower or so. Peak torque, you see the torque curve, the torque plateau is continuing pretty flat above 550 foot pounds. We'll pick a spot here at 500 and 559 foot-pounds of torque at 5,500 RPM. This was at uh, about eight pounds of boost run on this combination with the Vortec, and we were blowing through that we did have an, an air-to-water intercooler on this thing. If you'd like to see more on this video, there is a video up that details exactly what we did because it actually went into much more detail on this 347 build. But the important point is that we have now pushed this thing up 
beyond what a lot of people feel is the block splitting territory for this thing. And, and like the previous one with the Torque Storm Supercharger, this thing made a lot of runs under boost. In fact, we use this test motor a lot to run not just this Vortec, but many other forms of force induction and nitrous and all kinds of stuff, because basically it was just a test motor. So even at this power level run many, many times, we never hurt the block. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what's the takeaway on our twin supercharged? And by twin, I mean that we had two of them, our different supercharged five liter combinations, one of them a 302, the other one a 347. It's obviously possible to make very good power by replacing what I call the big three in this case, heads, cam, and intake manifold, remove the factory E7TE heads, the factory HO camshaft, and the factory HO, or in our case, the GT40 intake manifold. If you remove those things and install appropriate combinations that will make more power, ported heads, bigger, wilder cam timing, and a better intake manifold, we can make good power. And if we start out making more naturally aspirated power, when we add boost to that, either from the Torque Storm Supercharger or the Vortex Centrifugal Supercharger, we obviously can also do this with the Kenny Bell or a Whipple or, or any kind of turbo combination. We can make more power. If we start off with more NA power, we end up making more power under boost. The other takeaway from this is on both of these combinations, we exceeded 600 horsepower going towards 700 on one of them. So we made a lot of power and guess what? We didn't split the block. So is the block splitting on the five liter? Is it RPM related? Is it a balance problem? Is it luck of the draw? Is it some blocks are bad, some were not? Let me know in the comments what you guys think about the whole block splitting thing. All of these combinations that I've run on the dyno, we've never had any problems. In my own personal Mustang, I ran a Vortex supercharged combination, combination with heads, cam, and intake. We even ran it in the Silver State where I was at wide open throttle for basically 32 minutes and nothing happened, obviously. And I ran that thing for 85,000 miles before we end up taking that motor off and then running it extensively on the dyno at West Tech. And I never had any problems with it. Let me know if you guys have had problems. And on that note, it's time to go. Armature holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all this stuff. I'll keep testing.